Bottle openers. I like bottle openers. They're a bit nostalgic. They're useful. And over the years, openers have found permanent homes in my tackle box, my shaving kit, all over really. They're handy. So when I came across one resting in my parents' basement that weighs a pound and is bigger than a beer bottle, oh man, heft that baby in your hands and you realize it just needs a handle and some TLC and it's my new favorite tool. Hi, I'm Tim and welcome to my YouTube channel. This bottle opener is something that I'd seen in my parents' basement for years. It was just rusting uh, and I thought maybe I could repurpose this. It would be an interesting conversation piece. But it's uncomfortable. It needs a handle. So that's today's build. A handle for this really big bottle opener. It's called the Cap King, and from what I can find out, it dates between 1950 and 1970. It's heavy, and it's pretty beaten up, but it's cool. It's a ten and a quarter inch, one pound bottle opener that hasn't opened a bottle in at least 20 years. It has some rust, but that's easily remedied with an acid bath. 30 minutes in phosphoric acid to remove the rust. And boom, rust is gone, but the pitting remains as evidence of age and mileage. It's full of character, and it Kind of looks like an old bicycle part. Every defect gets respect, right? It appears these mega bottle openers were not offered with handles of any kind. At this size and weight, closer in size to grill tools than a typical bottle opener, it really needs a handle to be functional. To coincide with its age, I wanted the handles to look original, dark, weathered, and imperfect. Fortunately, I had the perfect salvage oak to make the handles. These oak drawer fronts are over 30 years old and have plenty of natural defects from use, so they were the perfect choice. I tried to avoid any areas that would need filler or epoxy, but I didn't sweat the small stuff. I like to use salvage wood where I can and when it makes sense for the project. After transferring the outlines onto the oak, I was ready to cut the blanks out with my jigsaw. After clamping the blanks to the work surface, I began making cuts wide of the pencil lines by about an eighth of an inch. A bandsaw would make cutting these much quicker, but I've yet to dedicate garage space for one. Even though this jigsaw is old, it still does a great job. Using a jigsaw requires me to clamp and rotate projects when cutting, which adds time. I may make a table to hold the saw at some point, but since my needs are minimal, I'm fine for now continuing to use my jigsaw for small projects like this. One thing I do like about using an older jigsaw is that it's very heavy and the weight helps to keep it stable so the saw doesn't bounce around. I'm not being very precise with these rough cuts as I will sand the blanks to their final size later. For now, all I need to do is rough in the shapes on the two handle blanks. Next I moved on to drilling the holes in the handles. The opener already had a hole in the end and it perfectly matched my 5 8 inch Forstner bit. So I used the opener as a guide to start this hole and keep it straight. A second hole needed to be drilled through both the handles and the middle opener. I chose to go with a half inch diameter for this as 5 8 seem too big. These holes will accept dowels which, when glued, will hold the handles in place. In order to sand the blanks to shape, I needed to temporarily hold them in position. I cut a short length of oak dowel with the coping saw for each hole, inserted the dowels, and began sanding the handle blanks to the contours of the bottle opener. If you've watched my other videos, you know I start most projects by roughing out shapes on the computer. I did not do that this time and I should have. I'm really not sure why I didn't, but by skipping this step I ended up wasting production time refining the shape of the handles. The areas that matched the contours of the opener were easy enough, but the business end of the handles went through several shapes before arriving on the final. I started the project without a design goal, which in the end meant more time on the back end of the project and a fair amount of uncertainty as to whether the handle would look right. Time spent on the front end always saves time on the back end, and I was kind of kicking myself for not planning it out. When I moved over to the router table to round over the edges, I discovered I didn't really like the shape, which was the second iteration at that point. I contemplated stopping and going to the computer to work out the design, but I decided to press on, thinking in the back of my mind that I might have to start over. So back to the sander to refine the shape further, hoping that I could arrive at something I liked while taking a mental inventory of what scrap oak was lying around the shop, just in case. And then, back to the router table to round it over. Eventually, I arrived at a shape I liked, which was a relief. 
So now it was time to apply a finish, but before doing that, I wanted to make temporary plugs to keep the stain out of the holes. My initial plan was to insert the final oak dowels unstained and then apply a polyurethane finish. So the handle would be dark, but the dowels would be lighter and contrast. That meant I had to stain the handles before the dowels were inserted. So these temporary plugs were needed. They turned out to be useful, making it easier to hold a piece and apply stain. As I was wiping the excess stain from the handles, I decided to abandon the contrasting dowel idea. This opener has character that needed to be presented in a utilitarian handle, nothing fancy. This dark stain on the oak had the character I was hoping for, so I'll keep the contrasting dowel idea for another project where it makes better sense. So it was time to apply the glue and begin the process of final assembly by inserting the dowels, clamping the project, and allowing the glue time to set. While waiting for the glue to dry, I debated the best method for making the dowel flush with the handle. Since this was salvage wood with plenty of defects and the opener is 40 plus years old, I decided to use the hobby rasp, followed by a light sanding and not worrying about any marks the rasp might make. To even out the stain, I gave the tops of the handles a light sanding and applied a final stain coat with a bristle brush, wiping off the excess almost immediately after applying. I gave it a few hours to dry and called this mega bottle opener handle done. A one pound bottle opener is a novelty for sure, but that's what makes it fun. And with the addition of the handle, it's now comfortable to use and has already found its permanent home alongside my grill tools. It's not as portable as some of the other openers I've collected over the years and will never find its way into my tackle box or shaving kit, but since I grill out at least once a week during the summer, it will get a lot of use. It was fun to give something this old new life. If you like this video, please give it a like or subscribe or both. New video next week. Thanks for watching.